All right, we're here at Gamesloot.com's booth at Gen Con 2010. I'm Dan, and I'm talking with Ryan Macklin of Evil Hat and IPR. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Uh, how's it going, Internet? Uh, well, uh, glad to be here, glad to be here. And Ryan is also known for This Just In from Gen Con, which you can find at thisjustinfromgencon.com, appropriately enough. They do a bunch of updates, so if you go there by the time you're seeing this, they'll all be up and you'll be able to review the whole show, all the hotness. So we're going to show you a little bit of the new hotness here from Evil Hat. This is the Dresden Files role-playing game. Just came out a few weeks ago, I think. And there's two books. That one there is uh, volume, this one's volume one, right? Which is, what's the difference between volume one and volume two? Uh, so volume one, uh, our story, is, is the core book. It's got the rules for the players, for making the, for making the city you're going to play in, for making your characters, for playing the game, for doing magic. Uh, all the GM advice, uh, all, the, all the you know nifty uh, stat stuff for making different kind of supernatural stuff. Uh, this, is, you know, this is what you need if you want to play the game. Uh, this right here, uh, Volume Two, Our World. Uh, it's the it's got a short story by Jim Butcher in it. Uh, it's got stat blocks for pretty much every monster uh, in, in the series. Uh, we've gone up to up to the tenth book. Um, it's got stat blocks and, and a lot of information for pretty much anyone ever mentioned in any of the novels. Uh, and it's got got a little bit about a, a cult to Chicago written by uh, Ken Height. Uh, and this is the book that you need if you're a Dresden fan. As one of the other developers on it, Clark Valentine said, it's like, so you know, at $40, if you value your time as a GM at, you know, $10 an hour, uh, it's worth it because it saves you at least 40 hours of work if you're prepping. Yes, absolutely. Uh, gorgeous books, really nice. You want to flip up one to a cool picture there, oh, and yes. uh, we'll uh, show that off. They're all full color. All these, these, these there are we go. All beautiful full color right here. Uh, Who did the art for this? A variety of folks. A variety of folks, including we've got some of the art from the uh, from the comic. Uh, welcome the to the Dable Brothers comic. Yeah, yeah, and you can also see there's some marginalia in here, um, like little highlighted notes. Uh, so uh, the conceit is that Harry, Billy, and Bob, uh, Billy wrote it, and then Harry and Billy and Bob are trading notes in this unfinished draft that suddenly finds its way out in the world. Uh, so it's kind of it's kind of fun if you're if you're a Dresden fan, uh, it'll be a book you read cover to cover. And if you're not a Dresden fan, if you have no oh, Dresden, what the heck is that? I thought Dresden was a city in Germany. Uh, summarize the Dresden Files. What's cool about the Dresden Files in two sentences or less? Uh, so uh, Harry Dresden is a wizard private eye who gets beat up, throws around fire, and is totally awesome. There you go. Awesome. That was like one sentence. Uh, yeah, so it's it's kind of that uh, pulp. You know, uh, Pulp Fiction, I guess. I mean, that like, 40s. It is. It, it is. It's. It's got the sense of. It's got the pulp sensibilities, uh, of, of you know the sort of you know the the the, the, the private eye you know uh, Chandler esque sort of thing. Um, not necessarily trying to be told in that language because told in you know, a modern language uh, with a, a lot of interweaving of all the myths that we grew up. You know, fairies and vampires and werewolves and all of that with you know little spins on it to kind of make it his own. Yeah, they tie it in the modern world. It takes place in Chicago originally. You can play the game in any city you want, but the original stories are from there. Right. And uh, I've just started reading the books myself, actually, and the writing is just so fun. And the, the story the story that's in here, a short story, is an exclusive story. So if you've read all the books, Changes is the latest one, I believe. Mm -hmm. There's a couple standalones, then there's the comics. That's new original content from Jim Butcher, the author. So, And he worked very uh, closely with you guys on this, I believe, on the whole process. He, he worked, um, so uh, he and uh, Fred Hicks and Rob Donahue, they're all uh, big you know, friends from, from, from back in the day. Um, and when it came time for, for Jim to, to have a game you know, uh, come out, uh, his agent said, well, why not have you know, your friends who've won awards to do this game? Uh, and since then, he basically trusted us to, to work with it. And, you know, and we made this, uh, and it's sort of a testament to us, I think, and, and to, to the fans, really, uh, that Jim's proud of this work. Yep. So that's the Dresden Files. Another cool thing about this and about all Evil Hats products is that they have a PDF guarantee. So if you walk into your local store, you pick up Dresden Files or any of the other books, you pick up Spirit of the Century, you pick up uh, Don't Rest Your Head, stuff like that, you can say, hey, I'd like the PDF. You can either email Evil Hat or you can just tell your retailer that. They can contact them and they will email you the PDF. That's nice right. and easy. So you get the digital and you get the physical all for the same price as just the physical. That's right. We, uh, we don't want to compete with the retail world. We want to cooperate. And that's uh, available now in, it came out in June, right? It came out uh, in June, came out in uh, Origins. Uh, it's available uh, now through, uh, you know, through your uh, local game store. It's available through, uh, through Indie Press Revolution. Yep. And through EvilHat.com. That's right. So that's Dresden Files. Now, there's something else we want to chat about. We don't have it here to show you, but we'll just do it real quick. Fiasco. Now, Fiasco, the conceit is, as I understand it, 
It's basically any Coen Brothers movie ever, the game. Yep, it is. It's a game that was uh, designed it's, uh, by Bully Pulpit Games, uh, Jason Morningstar, uh, Steve Sagetti, um, the fiasco, or now I get to say any award-winning fiasco. Uh, the, the idea is that you're playing a Coen Brothers movie in roughly the same amount of time it takes to watch one. And, and you know, you, you start off the, the game by making up all these twisted relationships with these really strange, like, uh, you know, needs that they have or objects that people want or locations where things are definitely going to happen. And you go around and you just you frame scenes uh, about how they're basically twisted and twisted and twisted. And you strain and strain and strain. And you just sort of watch the madness snap. And that's really about, like, most role-playing games are like, oh, we're going to cooperate, we're going to build the... A- you know, party up, and we're going to continue on from time to time. Fiasco is not designed to be continued. It's designed to be, you play things, terrible things happen to most everybody, right. and then the game's over. I mean, you, 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 you know that when you enjoy the movie where the guy you're rooting for still gets thrown in the wood chipper because that's the right ending, you know? Like, oh, it's too bad. But you know what? That was totally like, that's Fiasco right there. That's that game where you're like, you know what? My guy, uh, I played it uh, last night with some fantastic folks uh, playing a, a, a in Los Angeles, 1936. Uh, it ended with my guy uh, having a gun to his head, and a guy, you know, looking at him like just shaking his head no, and like so the gun points down like it's not going to fire. No, it actually shoots my character in the kneecaps, and that was just like, and I'm like, and that's what I want to have happen is my last scene because that's what he deserves. And those make really make memorable experiences because you're creating a fresh game every time. The game yeah. really walks you through. It has like. You could do quick uh, charts, so it'll give you like, okay, just choose some of these things. It helps you yep. build the story so that it makes the play experience really interactive because you're all building it. It's not like just the GM is building it. Right. It is a GM-less system, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a no GM, whereas like, I think it really it's like a lot. everyone's a GM. You're trading it off. And it won the NE4? Uh, so it won the uh, judges spotlight um, for uh, basically the judges each get to pick a game uh, this year that they got to, uh, to say this game deserves an award. And this is like from me personally, not not you know from the voters or things like that. And and so Fiasco was featured by I believe it was Jeremy Ware, uh, and that and I you know think it's a, a, a huge honor, well deserved, and uh, and I just have a lot of love for, for the guys over there, the Ennies and the guys over at Bully Pulpit. And really fun art uh, and presentation on that. So to check out the art and presentation, go to IndiePressRevolution.com. Uh, that's the main site for it, right? Uh, that's a, that's a site where you can buy it. You can also go to uh, BullyPulpitGames.com. I believe is the site for. Uh, for checking out direct, we can also find uh, online uh, supplemental material that they put out for free. Yep. And you can, of course, find it at your local store if they carry it. If not, they should be able to get it for you. That's Fiasco by Jason Morningstar and Bully Pulp of Games, uh, through, available through IPR. So thanks very much, Ryan, for chatting with us. Is there anything else? Any parting thoughts on Gen Con you wanted to leave us with? Uh, I got to say, I mean, it's Sunday, it's the end of the day, and uh, part of me is already waiting for, looking forward to next year. Yeah, we're already formulating <laughs> ideas for what we want to do for next year. So, oh, you know, that's when you know it's a good show, when yep. you've, uh, you're have you thoroughly exhausted, as you can tell we are, <laughs> and you are already like, let's do that again. Yep, yep. I'm, I'm already looking forward to, uh, to this, to 2011. <laughs> great. Well, have a great rest of the show. Have a good trip home, safe travels, and we'll talk to you again soon. Uh, you as well. You as well. And uh, thank you, Internet. Take care.